I, I certainly get the criticism that people think that I'm making other people look dumb. But I don't feel like that is my goal, and I also don't feel that they are dumb. You know, I really just uh, think that humanity as a whole doesn't know a lot about science, and that's, uh, that's fine. But let's accept that ignorance and let's improve, let's improve upon it. Let's all learn something about it. Well, my name is Derek and I run a channel called Veritasium. What is that? For someone who hasn't seen it, if someone came from Mars, how would you explain what you're doing? So, I do lots of different uh, style videos, but all around science and mainly around physics, but I also do a little bit of chem and bio. I do some talking to people on the street about what they know about science, you know, um, like where does the mass of a tree come from? Are you actually heaviest at night and lightest in the morning? Or, um, uh, yeah, and I do some experiments, things like um, you know, what's the tallest straw that you could actually use, tallest vertical straw that you could actually make. And I do, I don't know, some other little science tricks like relighting a candle without touching it. So, and I do some songs as well. I think one of the keys to what I do is I look at what people actually know before I start trying to teach anyone about science. So I'm really starting from the level that I see, you know, everyone around me. Um, uh, from the level where they're thinking. I studied uh, engineering physics and then I went on to do a PhD in making films to teach physics. So I was looking at, you know, what are the key elements that you need to have in a film that uh, effectively gets people to learn some physics. Well, I was really interested in physics and science. I love those things. Um, but I'm also interested in, in communicating and in making films, the craft of you know, making something that people can watch and actually learn something from. So uh, my PhD was about merging those two passions so I could look at physics and also how to communicate it, how to teach it, um, how to make a film about it, how to actually get people to learn something from a film. You obviously wrote a thesis? I did. I wrote a, a big PhD thesis, which you can download online. What's its title? The title is Designing Effective Multimedia for Physics Education. And give us the uh, one minute YouTube summary. What did, what did you find? What, did, what have you added to the, the body of knowledge in this field? So uh, there are some people who look at how to make multimedia, how to make short films, videos um, that teach science and or, or that teach anything and one of the main requirements of a good video is that it's got to cut out all extraneous content so the point is you know you, you never want to clutter up the screen you never want to give more detail than you have to to try to communicate your point um, and so I was looking at making a video like that to teach the basic laws of physics the basic laws of motion Newton's first and second laws but when I tried just the most basic expository summary that I could uh, people felt like they're learning and they were getting more confident and they said they enjoyed the video but their scores on conceptual tests uh, didn't change at all. So I thought that that was a, a really curious finding. Um, and I tried a different strategy in which I presented some misconceptions, uh, often in the form of a dialogue. Um, and we would animate those misconceptions and then through that dialogue process work back towards the correct physics. And those type of videos seem to do much better. So um, to me, it's really important to show what people are thinking, you know, especially the incorrect information that, that people are thinking, um, before you move on to the correct, the correct physics. Because otherwise, people aren't even aware that what you're presenting is different to what they're already thinking. And, um, and I, I think that's a really important finding. So I try to incorporate misconceptions in most, into most of the work that I do. This is uh, representing the Earth. OK. Ooh. And this represents, what do you think? Yes. Now, uh, our first uh, challenge is how far apart uh, are they? Like, uh, roughly. Like, roughly, uh, about that much. So, so I think everyone has an experience of the world, and, uh, and they have lots of ideas about it. And some of those ideas don't line up with the, the scientific sort of understandings that we have now. Um, and it turns out, you know, from the research that I did, that you really need to dig into those beliefs and the things that people are thinking beforehand if you're going to change their mind about anything. For example, you know, Newton's laws of motion. So you're saying most people don't understand Newton's laws of motion? Yeah, absolutely. I think most people on the street, you know, don't really understand inertia, which is why I spend, uh, or I've, I've made quite a few videos around that theme of inertia. Um, because it's a really tricky thing to get your head around. Otherwise, people think about weight. So differentiating a force that attracts an object to the ground from its inertial mass, which makes, makes it difficult to accelerate, differentiating those two things is really hard. Um, and I think it takes repeated, repeated exposure. So you know, a lot of my videos have focused on, on that theme. Now, if we want to talk about the distance between the Earth and the Moon, yep. it's actually... 
It's about here. So you've kind of taken this, like, have you sign, scienceized the art of making videos? Like, what, like, it sounds like you've taken a kind of a, applied the scientific method to making videos. Absolutely. You know, I think that there is a science to teaching and learning, and I think we need to do that better. We need to do teaching and learning better, and the way we do it is through doing scientific experiments. So what was really important to me when I did my thesis was that I had a, a randomized control trial. So I was looking at students who went online, watched a video, um, and they were randomly assigned to that video. So I had no selection in terms of my samples, um, and the tests were all conducted online. There was no one around to monitor anything, and then I just looked at the results in the end, and I found videos with misconceptions were much more effective at improving conceptual understanding than those without. So when you, when you um, gathered this knowledge and you came to these conclusions and you've now applied them to your, your films, how have you applied them? How, how, how did it make your filmmaking differently to what it would have been if you hadn't done this PhD? So I think that there is an intuitive way to make a film in which you try to explain something in the clearest way that you know how. Um, and sometimes I like to do that, especially in areas where people don't know much about, um, about the science. But in areas that people have experience, uh, I like to start by talking to people and involving them in the discussion so that I can see where they're coming from. You know, many times I go out on the street and have a chat to people about a particular issue, you know, what is light, and I find that they're starting from a completely different um, starting point than I would expect. And so it's so important to incorporate that into you know, the narrative of that film. Like, okay, you guys are thinking about it this way, let's, um, you know, let's, let's tackle that. For example, when I went out asking people about, are you lightest in the morning? They were saying to me that the body actually converts matter into energy. I heard that a lot. And I thought that's something I would never have thought of because I thought the law of conservation of, of matter or, you know, particles is, is something that we all kind of have. But, you know, it didn't seem to be a common opinion. So you have to deal with it, otherwise you're never going to teach anyone anything. You have to start where they are. What you're talking about sounds kind of like market research, the stuff you have to find out first before you know how to pitch your video. But you're making it part of the video. Is that just because it's a nice gimmick? Or do you think having it as part of the video, having your market research as part of the video, is important somehow? I think including you know, people's conceptions is a central part of those videos because I hope that people watching can relate to what they're seeing on screen. You know, it's one thing for me to come in and say, look, most people think, you know, matter and energy are being converted by the body. Um, it's another for them to see me interview people on the street and see that that really is the way it is. I get the comment so many times, you know, Derek, how carefully are you editing your interviews to make people look that dumb? Um, and my point is not to make people look dumb, um, but to say, this is what I found when I went and asked this question. You know, how far away is the moon from the earth. Most people think, you know, it's uh, under a meter if the earth is a basketball and the moon is a tennis ball. Um, but it's actually about eight meters. I mean, it's just changing your whole idea of scale. And I think it really makes the, the videos more engaging if you start with, you know, what do you think? Because it really is asking people on the street a question, and I think by videoing it, it's actually asking the audience that question. They get to consider it, and then they get to see, you know, uh, how it actually works out, and they have more of an investment in what's happening. Yeah, um, I saw a slow-mo video of a slinky falling um, nearly a year ago and I thought it was incredible when I saw it and it was absolutely not what I expected. So a lot of the videos I make are about things that I know have confused me in the past or have amazed me when I've, when I've learned about them and this slinky when you see it is just so extraordinary that I understand why it's gone viral and, um, and therefore I've done it a couple more times um, each time in a better slow-mo or better resolution to really um, get the best pictures of the way a slinky falls because it is just mind-blowing to see it and, um, and it's been my most popular type of video because you know I think visually it is just so incredible. Are you sick of them then, or do you owe them a debt of gratitude? I, I certainly owe, owe Slinkies a debt of gratitude, but I want to move on. Um, but I've learned some lessons from that, and I hope to put them into my, my next videos, where I'm looking for really visually stunning things that people haven't looked at before, that are just kind of everyday objects. It seems to me to be taking the fun and the magic out of filmmaking, to be so analytical about it. If I said to someone, I met this guy while I was away, 
and he makes science videos, but he's really researched it and he's done the stats and all that and he uses that to make his videos. It's kind of like a it's kind of like how in some sports now they they take all the stats and find the best way to win, like we've seen this film Moneyball and things like that. And it's is it sanitizing the sport? Are you sanitizing your filmmaking? Do, how do you respond to that? So I think that there is a place for scientific research to make films and scientific research um, to make a great uh, educational video. But I also think there's an artistry as well. I think that there are elements of narrative um, and the way that information is revealed in timing, pacing, um, creativity, things that don't necessarily come out of the research but that are really important as well. So like, I think there is a, a scientific element, um, but I think there's also an artistic element, and those have to merge well. So I'm constantly pushing myself to, um, to make my videos more artistic, more creative, more visually exciting, um, and, and hopefully uh, I'll achieve that. You famously made, well, I think it's famously because I've seen it, you made a video that critiqued Khan Academy, and I'd like to link people off to it because it's quite a long video. But can you kind of summarize what that video said? Well, the key to that video was basically, uh, in that video I was summarizing my PhD research, and uh, what I found was that people aren't very good at assessing their own learning uh, from a video, and that clear expository summaries seem to result in very small gains, very little um, increase in understanding for novices. Now, for people with higher knowledge, um, expository summaries seem to be better because they're just a bit of review, but for a novice learner, I found that the types of videos that Khan generally produces, which are you know, concise expository summaries, do very little um, to actually improve understanding. Hang on one second. Yeah. What's an expository summary? You know, basically like a good lecture. So if I just told you something, this is Newton's first law, and, and I showed you a diagram and an animation, and I said that's what it is, there you go, now you've learned it. Uh, most people would walk away saying, yeah, no, I got that. But if they were asked to apply it, perhaps to a different context, or to explain it back, chances are they wouldn't really have understood it. And what do you do differently? Because you explain things to people too. I often explain things as well. So I think a key for me is to start with misconceptions and then show how the misconception can morph into something which we understand to be a more, more cl complete scientific truth. What's it like for you when you watch other people's science videos with the knowledge you have? Um, sometimes I really enjoy them. You know, I, I enjoy a lot of science videos on the web, um, different people making them. Um, sometimes I'm skeptical about how well they actually educate people and, and raise their level of understanding, you know, given my experience. But at the same time, maybe not every video needs to be about raising the level of conceptual understanding. Maybe some videos can be about inspiring people to find out more or just getting people excited about science or, you know, getting people to uh, feel more comfortable talking about scientific issues. Whatever it is, I think there's the, there can be a place for different types of science videos. I do a range of different science videos, um, but some of them are songs. So uh, when you ask about the, the artistry of making a science video, I think there's something to be said for making it fun and enjoyable and presenting it in a different way, and sometimes that's in a song. So I hope people enjoy those videos because I put a lot of effort into them and, and I put my heart and, and soul into them. And right at this point, I'm going to cut to a little bit of footage, a little teaser of a song with Derek, but I'm going to make sure it's the one without the beard, because that made me laugh. <laughs> Experiments are how we test theories and further the progress of science. There are many theories to compare. Ooh, ooh, experiments help us find the best one, the best one. There are many theories to compare. Ooh, ooh, experiments help us find the best one.